Bad news, everybody. The planet is melting. I wish I was kidding, but uh, no. According to the European Climate Agency, Copernicus, 2023 had shattered all yearly heat records and just about hit the 1.5 degrees Celsius limit to avoid the most severe effects of climate change. Uh, now, according to their findings, 2023 reached 1.48 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial times. Now, that might not sound like much, but that, that is bad news. That's really bad news. That record heat is responsible for deaths in Europe, North America, China, and many other places around the world in 2023. Now, for example, just one county in Arizona, there were 500 heat-related deaths in the summertime. Now, look, heat deaths are more prevalent among people 65 years or older, okay? And, and, and it's not just exposure to heat themselves uh, itself that does it. There are, you know, older people that have certain uh, conditions or they're a bit more predisposed to dying from heat-related illness. Still, not good. Now, by the way, on that, heat-related deaths have actually increased by 85% since the 1990s according to a 2022 annual Lancet Countdown and Health and Climate Change report. So, climate change, killing old people. Now, the same report found that there are on average 86 days of health-threatening high temperatures between the years of 2018 and 2022. Human-caused climate change made more than 60% of those days more likely to have happened, according to the analysis. Now, in total, that year, there were 1,700 a little more than 1,700 heat-related deaths in the U.S. And of course, those numbers, when they do come out for 2023, they're probably going to be higher because of the record temperatures. And again, that's, that's just that's from high temperatures and people who are more sensitive to heat-related illness. That doesn't deal with climate change-related deaths. You have people who suffer from the effects of wildfires, droughts, hurricanes, just a, a bad air quality as well from those wildfires. And let's not forget, of course, that climate change is having an impact on our food systems and actually threatens our entire food system. What's happening now is not even the worst of it yet. Okay. It, it's already not good though. 2024 is actually expected to be worse because in addition to the effects of putting greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, as we have been, we also have the effects of El Nino. Now, that said, um, El Nino gets overstated, right? El Nino is actually a super small portion of the warming. In fact, according to a University of Melbourne climate scientist, Malte uh, Meinhausen, uh, point, just 0.1% degrees Celsius of the warming comes from El Nino and other smaller causes. Well, we had 1.48. So that leaves actually about 1.3 degrees Celsius of the warming uh, from greenhouse gases. Wow. So, yeah. Uh, majority of it is greenhouse gases. That's carbon. That's methane. That's going out in the atmosphere. Great. Now, this has scientists like Copernicus Deputy Director Samantha Burgess saying that January is going to be on track to be so warm that for the first time in a 12-month period, we'll actually exceed the 1.5 degree threshold. Wow. Uh, now, of course, she then also says, look, that goal, just because we're going to outrun it doesn't mean we can't do anything. The 1.5 degree goal, she says, has to be kept alive because lives are at risk and choices have to be made. Now, what choices? Now, we're not talking about choosing to do, you know, uh, paper straws. I, I think we're way beyond paper straws. What we need to have is government action on a mass scale like the transition away from fossil fuels, for example. That's going to be the big one. Now, the thing is, it's a choice that governments make. Now, since it's a choice, it's a choice that can be made. And we, our governments and the governments all over the world are not making that choice. They're making the choice of continuing to stick with fossil fuels for the most part. And see, in, in the United States, the oil companies have already paid politicians to put out a message to the people that, for one, doesn't exist, uh, climate change doesn't exist, but if it does, well, there's nothing we can do about it because it's not generated by, you know, it's not man-made. That's not true. 
And a lot of people, a majority of people know that, understand that. In fact, according to an August 2023 Pew survey, 54% of U.S. adults first describe climate change as a major threat to our country's well-being, which it is. That's true. And in a separate survey said that the government should do, this is a June 2023 survey, uh, 56% said we should do more to reduce the effects of global climate change, meaning that they do believe that it is driven by human activity and therefore the government can actually do something about it. And speaking on what they actually think we should do about it, two thirds of Americans said that we should boost solar and wind power production. Now, I know there are differences uh, in how many people would support completely phasing out fossil fuels. Younger people, especially younger liberals, younger Democrats, and younger progressives are much more in favor of saying, yes, let's just completely phase out fossil fuels. Older people and Republicans <laughs> uh, and even younger Republicans are like, ah, let's stay with a mix. Let's keep fossil fuels in the mix. Uh, but you definitely, you know, should still do more solar and wind. Of course, uh, older Republicans are much less likely to support, you know, having a, an increase in solar and wind because they want to continue burning coal, oil, natural gas. Uh, that said, it's important to uh, note these polls because the majority is saying climate change is real. It's a threat and we should do something. And by we, I mean the government. Now, Meis, uh, Meinhausen, um, the Australian climate scientist did explain that while it's natural for the public to wonder whether the 1.5 degree target is lost, that we shouldn't focus on the point. The point, and, and this is again echoing uh, Burgess, we should continue to try to rein in warming. Just because we've run the stop sign doesn't mean we need to keep our foot on the gas, okay? Um, in fact, here's what Meinhausen says. We are not abolishing a speed limit because somebody exceeded the speed limit. We need to double our efforts to step on the brakes. Yes, I agree with that. Now, unfortunately, governments who can actually do something are unwilling to do that. I mean, we just had COP23 not too long ago. And that ended with an agreement of, oh, yeah, we should probably do something, but no concrete agreement on doing that. We should do something. We're just not going to. Oh, and, and if Republicans, of course, regain the government here, well, then not only are we gonna not going to not do anything, uh, we're also going to slide backwards in a time that we can ill afford to.